free roam for Shou. Well, they've got the Viego locked in for Wei here on the side of RNG. So double melee top side there with the jungler and the top laner. Thinking about this Tristana here, they're going to go ahead and lock that one in. So a bit of a different look, denying that from Utapon here for the second. I also think it's just a good strategy for RNG, saving Xiaohu for second half, because he has a much wider champion pool than what we've seen Gala willing to show. Like, Gala's going to be Kai'Sa, Tristana, Aphelios, maybe a Zaya. Like, there's some things there, but save that for later on. And DFM looks like they're going to do it. They are going to do a bit of a run back with a better jungle matchup to pair with your melee mid laner. I am really surprised, though, because what I thought we might see is them go, okay, look, we're gonna end up leaving this counter pick for Yaharong in the mid lane. Let's try and get the likes of our uh, AD carry and support on this next rotation, then we'd be fine. So I feel like when I'm looking at RNG, they're ban away AD carries, put Yudapon onto his uh, the back foot, and then you're kind of going, okay, well, is this going to be as successful when you have Gala with the extra bit of range thanks to draw the beat? Well, one nice part about marksman bans here in this draft for the side of DFM is the only marksman that was banned away in the first half is Graves, who is not played in the bot lane role anyway, so the pool hasn't been pinched incredibly so far. Kaisa will be banned out by RNG. Lissandra banned away by DFM. We do not have synced up picks for the roles here in the first half of the draft, so I expect the bans to be a bit lopsided in the second half as well. Galio banned away. So two of these playmaking potential, like team fighter type of mid laners, banned away from Shelf. Yeah, and I, I like the bans coming out from both sides, especially the Yumi ban coming out last, because I was so terrified that we would get the Sivir Yumi coming out for the side of DFM. I actually really would like the Aphelios pick here. Just give yourself some more scaling insurance policy. You have the Moonlight Vigil for big AoE when you're already setting up for this huge team fight, and that's gonna be in RNG's court to answer back and for Shahu to show something that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the One. And I'm really curious what Harp is gonna bring to the table here as well. He has played eight unique champion picks already in the support role. This guy, very flexible when it comes to the bottom lane. We've seen the Shen, we've seen things like the Morgana as well. And I like that we're kind of leaving open the opportunity here for Harp to find out how he wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Ming and try and make Gala and Ming that little bit more uncomfortable on this bot side. And now for Xiao, who, I mean, we've already seen him pull out aggressive picks like the LeBlanc. Once again, for me, it feels like RNG wanting to opt into more agency, especially the fact that they have this Tristana. They want to try and set up for these aggressive plays towards that bot side. It's going to be out if he can unlock himself a little bit earlier on. A lot of this composition from RNG kind of feels like, a, hey, we're just going to go back to comfort and see if this works, right? Mm -hmm. Waze, uh, Diego was a massive pick back in spring, back at MSI. We didn't really see a huge amount of it coming into summer. And um, you're looking at, like, the Tristana for Gala, LeBlanc coming back in for Xiaohu. These are kind of picks that these players are well known for, but it's not exactly something that we kind of think of traditionally as the meta picks we've seen so far. And I do like them going for engage here on the last pick because that was my big concern with these first four. There's not really a way to go in unless you're just nope. so far ahead that you're flanking them, collapsing, you're always there first, whatever. A Mumu is at least going to give them a trigger pull. It is going to give them a way to go if they want to take the fight. But what is DFM going to pick into it? Hard played Leona last time around. Definitely the Braum locked in. Yeah, I think it, it just looks like a great pick. You know what RNG have? Going to stop the Amumu from being able to get in. In, deny some access, as well as pairing pairs well with Sejuani. Again, just all ins on the fact of this huge AoE team fight that they've been setting up for. The only thing I'm worried about with the Braum pick is now this gives a ton of agency to show. He can pop in, he can blow a bunch of damage, hop back out. There's no one really that can lock him up per, uh, quickly enough, especially with like popping it without popping a cannon ult or a Sejuani ult or investing a huge amount to try and deal with him as he tries to get the poke. Right, it would have to be like a point blank Sejuani ult. Cannon's ult requires stacks. Yone has to channel his ult before he's able to use it. Braum needs stacks. Aphelios has to mark you and then CC yep. you. So LeBlanc, if played well, which we know what Xiaohu can do on the champion, could really run amok. But this is the thing. We said, hey, it's about Xiaohu in the early game last game. Talia was nowhere to be found. Now we're saying it's about Xiaohu coming into game number two. He needs to step up. He needs to get help from Wei to get control of this lane if he wants to have that impact that can win the game. And I feel like that's a distinction for me is that RNG's comp looks like it should do a bit better in scrapping in the early game. They want skirmishes, 2v2s, 3v3s, make it brawly. So for DFM, like, they, they can fare decently, but it's a lot more to about the 5v5s and especially scaling as the game goes later on. Exactly. That's what I look at. When I see champions like Diego, despite the fact that obviously he can go to Reset City, like yep. you take possession of five different bodies during the team fight, go off. 
When I see Viego, I think two and two v two, three v three type skirmishes. When I see Aatrox, I think that. When I see LeBlanc, I think that. Right? Like these champions are good at making those fights happen. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you want RNG to win this game, I don't think you want to see ten minutes on the clock before we get first blood. No, definitely not. Like, they need to get it going a little bit earlier. Once again, should have some semblance of pressure in this mid lane matchup early on in the game if Wei can try to combo down here. And then with the Braum coming out on bot side, it actually should also open up a lot of free reign for Gala and Ming. So Ming gonna have to be a bit more active on the map this time around because in game one, Harp was out roaming him. And that was one of the big things that was kind of the talking point, right? Was RNG, hey, look, we said push in mid. Maybe they can lean boss, but Wei almost tried to shortcut his way into bot side, didn't help out in mid, couldn't get Shao Hu's help. Steel did a really good job of reading these plays from RNG early and kind of bypassing some of the struggles that DFM had. And DFM kind of knew, hey, look, if we end up getting these small leads against the last composition, we will win. And now it kind of feels like, again, if RNG don't get off to these good starts, I mean, you're not getting resets for Viego, for Tristana, your LeBlanc starts to fall behind. DFM once more just have a great front-to-back team fighting team. So RNG need to make that work stick. Xiaohu also having the Ignite on LeBlanc. Remember last time with Talia, he took the Cleanse. He's not taking the Teleport here on the mid laners, so they aren't having that extra macro power later on in the game, but it does give him more individual capability to find those kills and get that ball rolling, and I like that, and I want to see RNG playing around that and enabling him. Both junglers are starting on their blue buffs this time around. You can actually see wards from both teams on the red buff of DFM, keeping track of that one, making sure that nobody's there. And so we're going to see junglers tapping opposite sides this second game. And I feel like for Steel, it's very similar to game one, where you expect to see him a lot mid, especially with the, the, the melee mid laner uh -oh. coming out. Is we're getting a ton of trading going on that I didn't expect at level one. Yeah. Show already having to blow the ignite. Xiaohu using the Ignite there kind of reminds me of back in the day when we had old runes and masteries and you just randomly ignite the guy level one for 5 AD. Feels good, but uh, not so good for Yaharong here as he is not level two at the same time as Xiaohu, which means Xiaohu can zone him away from this wave, really keep him far back as he tries to regenerate that HP. And Wei's the one who's actually going to benefit from this. Look where he is on the map. He's starting to get that invade in towards the top side here. Actually going to stick around in mid, see if he can punish Yaharong as he tries to push up, but had the opportunity to steal away those camps. Blaze coming in, right through the smoke. Goes for the stun, finds it. Nicely done there. Yaharong down to below 200 HP. No potions left in inventory. He's got to go home. And there might not be a kill, but look at the CS in mid lane right now. Yaharong will be able to get back because he's a TP, so should be able to, to get a lot of that under his, under his belt. But still, the fact that they've been able to assert this much pressure in mid early on, when we set that up as the win condition, is quite nice. And Steel, going to try and find something off the back of seeing away in the mid lane, but really no opportunities with Gala and Ming's wave getting pushed in. I will say the big winner here, though, is uh, Heavy in that top side. He's doing a great job of finding these early uh, wins in the trades and kind of pushing Breathe back underneath the tower. So nicely done, at least, from Heavy once more to get control over this matchup in the top side. Way, though, will force Steel away from this bot side. Scuttle and RNG once more, like we saw in game one, getting control early on this bottom side. Exactly. Despite the fact that DFM had the push in bottom lane, it was Xiaohu able to rotate to that crab where Yaharong just had so many minions underneath the turret. You can't can't afford to give all those up, so that meant having to back away there for Steel, but he is now able to get himself back on the other side of the map. He'll secure the Scuttle Crab up there. He's a little bit behind Viego in tempo, but that's what you would expect for this Sejuani versus Viego matchup. Evi still controlling that top side like you were talking about, taking advantage of the cannon range and the power nice and early, but now that Yaharong's teleport is down, I'm interested to see what more RNG is going to try to do here. Yaharong is trying to get this wave shoved out and crashed into the turret. Yeah, the problem is DFM, I feel like very conscious of that as we can see Steel even just hovering around mid right now, making sure that Yaharong can get that wave in no problem, and that way doesn't have an answer play in mid, but Wei actually gonna be looking towards his bot side. Oh boy, he's ready to go. Harp's gonna have to back up here a little bit, tries to dash back to his ally, but he only dashes a little bit. It won't be enough, flash or not. First blood over to Gal. Ming held so long onto that bandage toss, waited for the flash to come out from Harp, so he can follow up with that second attack attempt and manages to get the kills. RNG getting off the bat early here. And being able to take a summoner spell. So gonna be able to set up for a repeat play down on the spot side. Wave gets pushed in as well. So maybe you could try and answer back on a bounce back. And we're five minutes in and we've already had a lot of solid ganks come, coming out from RNG. And Dagda, we were talking about this a little bit before we came live that 
RNG are not really the team from the LPL to tilt. Yeah, they really aren't. They are very good at kind of resetting themselves. That's why they were able to bring it back in that best of five against LNG after going 2-0 down to find themselves at the World Championship. But, I mean, this was just great. And again, it kind of feel like caught DFM off guard. Because if you actually look at the paths in the way he had, he just stuck around, waited for the second respawn in his camps and bot side, took them, and then went for bot lane plays instead of actually resetting and going back to his top side like we'd kind of seen from Steel. So I don't think DFM were really prepared for a or sorry, for a to be there with the, the route that he'd gone. Well, Harp's gonna show up in mid lane now, just gonna walk through here, help Yaharong make sure that this wave is able to get shoved up. Xiao Hu can't do a whole lot about it, so he'll just have to fall back here to LeBlanc. Only level five, just now hitting level six. All of our solo laners actually at that critical juncture. It means a lot, especially for champions like this Kennen, that he has his teleport still up. He has his flash still up. If a fight breaks out somewhere and he's got a good spot to join up, that could be devastating. Exactly, because for DFM, this is the window they're looking for, right? Ultimates to be online, that's when Yaharong will start having pressure as Xiao actually does out trade him right now. And well, everything I'm saying goes out the window. He's forced to blow that one right away. Yeah, and just really nice job from Xiaohu, right? Lands the double chains, and because you're not exactly sure where RNG are on the map, they decide to end up using Yaharong's ultimate to get him to safety. But at least it should be back up for things like the uh, Rift Herald that's in a minute and a half time, because that's where I'm really curious to see what RNG's game plan is going to be. It feels like with Evi having ult, Yaharong having ult, Steel as well, like, that's a lot of CC on that top side. And even though we were talking earlier about the skirmish potential for RNG, like, it's matched quite heavily by DFM, so there is a world where RNG just go, we're going to lean bot, we're going to look to try and use that Tristana to take turret plates and just give Rift Herald across. I, right, because because they have many options, especially with how Shahu has been able to find himself in a pretty solid place in mid, because LeBlanc, an excellent champion, if they were the team on Rift Herald first, with the control they have in side lanes, can just pop over the wall, start poking people out, try to burn summoner spells and not allow DFM to enter, but their composition definitely giving them a lot to work with at this point in time. Scryer's Bloom gonna find Steel there in the top side river, but he's already secured the crab. It doesn't matter too much. He'll be able to safely make his exit as the second round of the buff starts spawning. Wei's gonna go ahead, start up that blue buff there on the RNG side. 1,000 gold lead for RNG, seven and a half minutes into the game. Remember the first Drake was already claimed at this point in the game, in game number one, by the side of DFM. They don't quite have that same early go on it this time around. Yaharong just continuing to farm up here in mid as Wei's hanging around nearby. You can see Xiaohu coming right back down the lane. They might look to see if they can catch Yaharong trying to shove up the next wave here. Yeah, and I, I like it as well because you're expecting DFM to try to want to take that skirmish, especially his ult's coming back up soon. There it is. Yaharong goes in, but with Steel nearby, DFM read that as, hey, this is a chance where they can try to punish him here. Let's make sure they can't do it. Back in bottom lane is 2v2. But Aphelios misses the Moonlight Vigil with Ming flashing out of the way. Just about able to get away from that one. Ming going in initially to make sure that he was able to uh, get at least a bit of CC to help him escape. Now, though, RNG setting up onto the Rift Herald. Pushing topside means it's going to be difficult for everybody to join. Xiao Hu finds Yahara. Well, won't find a whole lot more onto him, it looks like, as Xiao Hu and Wei are going to back up from this one. They're not trying to get in a big fight just yet. Harp and Ming now also here in mid lane. Walking up from the bottom side, which leaves Utapon all alone. Everybody always does the red, white, don't fight meme. Mogala just says, get this dude the hell out of here. He's not worried about it whatsoever as the mid lane fight continues. Harp jumping back away. Wei is ready to come in and try to secure this kill. Harp gets himself back out with a nice flash, and DFM comes back and finds the kill. They're getting the money. And bottom side, Utapon's grabbing a kill on Gala too. Double kill back in mid for Steel. It's DFM all over Summoner's Rift. It's happening! DFM find three, and this was my biggest worry for RNG if they're gonna go for this skirmish on the top side. You have to burst someone out with Xiao Hu away, otherwise the consistent damage is just there for DFM. Way overextends, ends up giving the kid across the DFM, and they can now turn it back with RNG. I don't know how you can test this. They're not done. They're gonna try. They'll walk up, only to see Steel take the eye. Arctic Assault should be fine to get him over the wall here, not going to get stuck in the pit. Boys, it's another DFM lead 10 minutes into the game. DFM, again, just great prep coming in, leaning on the same power picks to find an advantage. Sure, RNG are finding favorable trades in the lane. We've seen Xiao, who's actually doing quite well, breathes at a few waves that he's had prior on, been, been able to start leaning down. But DFM waiting for members like Harp to show up, knowing that if it is an even numbers fight, 
they are able to go for it. So I love that we get the replay now because so much from RNG just gets burnt onto Harp right here. Engage comes through. We're going to see the exhaust actually come out onto Wei, so he's unable to get a lot done. And sadly for Wei, right after he jumps in with the ulti, Steel answers back with his own allowing for the pick to come through. And I have no idea what the hell happened down about side. Yeah, looking at the minimap, <laughs> it looks like Galo went like fall in, try to see oh, if we he get gets to a kill it. here. All right. I, I think he just jumps in, yeah. And Unipon has the healing. Gala doesn't get the initial damage and uh, just completely overestimates how much he can get done. Gala's gonna want that one back. Got a little bit too hype there and ends up paying the price for it. DFM feeling good now. Sunfire Aegis completed on the Sejuani. This is one of those champions that sometimes we see players go for the Bami Cinder into Warmog's build, but he's 2-0. If he completes the Aegis, he stays ahead of the curve. He's much more of a threat here in the fights. I'm liking this. And he still has that Rift Shroud in the back pocket as well, so he can even add more into his bank account. We are going to start up the Dragon here. RNG are in position. I think he, if still, like, if DFM are able to get this Dragon and lean mid, they can immediately turn down the Rift Shroud because everyone on RNG's bot side. Ming jumps on Harp, but again, this is usually not a super successful plan to go after the Braum. And indeed, it is not just yet, but Amumu might be just as much of a problem. Unipod gets the snipe on Ming. How many times you gonna jump on Braum before you learn you can't be jumping on Braum? DFM doing a great job of punishing the RNG mistakes. Like, Shao was walking back mid from base. Four members of DFM there. They're bot lane very easily able to rotate. And when we were just saying that RNG typically haven't been one of our teams to get flustered, looks like they are, and DFM are answering back beautifully. Even going back to the Sunfire point, like, look at the damage that RNG has. We don't really have anyone who could burst down these tankier members of DFM. They've been trying on the Brahm so many times, I'm scared for them when, when they have to try to take down the Sejuani. It's the same conversation as game one. If RNG fall behind, you know, Xiaohu can't do what he needs to do, Wei can't get the resets, like, like DFM have such a strong front to back and they're already stacking these objectives as well. RNG are just throwing people at DFM and they're saying thank you very much, we'll take the gold. And let's go back to the Xiaohu win condition that we were talking about that you guys were hitting on so hard coming into the game. Remember that you're up against Yone and this is not the old school like Immortal Shield Bow, Infinity Edge, like no nope. crit Yone. This is the Bork Sunfire like modern bruiser build. It's hard to assassinate him if you're LeBlanc, if he's able to get going and he's able to be ahead of you. Kennen is just going to be a torpedo. He's going to go in and press R. After that, he's done. Whatever. If he dies, who cares? And that's why you, your big focus here is going to be Unipon, right? You want Xiaohu to be able to get access to him, but you've got two kills already. And like this, Aphelios has a kill force. Aphelios is one of those AD carries that hits back if you try to assassinate <laughs> him. So you've actually got to be super careful here, Shehu, that you're just not getting outpaced by DFM entirely. I also feel like one of the big takeaways from game one, like let's remember, Evi was getting hard focus, pretty much taken out of the game, didn't have a huge impact. But right. DFM two games in a row have drafted compositions with three threats. Even if you are able to take one down, they have the damage to be able to supplement the rest of a fight. And I like this about Evi, because remember this is the guy, like they keep banning the Gnar away from him on the side of RNG. He's known for having the good Gnar. He's known for playing stuff like the Urgot, right? Like this is a dude who is not afraid to take, take something that is not a meatball into the top lane. And his team's also not afraid to not have to play around him when he does that. Sometimes you see teams be like, okay, well, if you're on Ornn, we're gonna abandon you. If you're on anything else, we'll, we'll try to help you out a little. They're fine leaving him up there more as now here in bottom. The fights continue underneath the RNG turret. Steel flies in with an ulti over the wall, but it immediately gets cleansed off by Gala. Yeah, a little bit overzealous coming from DFM, but just the amount of pressure they're even able to exert in this 2v2. After Unipon threw out that Moonlight Vigil earlier on to chunk Gala out, getting some nice gold themselves. Now Yahara. Boy, got the flash out of Xiaohu there. Nicely done. I love how aggressively Yaharong plays this. Yone is one of those champions you get to bully early, but then once he finds his footing, he just becomes a protagonist. And Yaharong knows exactly when he finishes his training. <laughs> he really does. Didn't even take that long either, because we saw we saw him finish it in game one, I guess coming into another one in game two. And now for DFM, I mean, we were setting up RNG, wanting the early skirmishes, finding a lead for themselves, having a 3K gold lead, breaking down first turret, and it's only gonna get easier for, from here. RNG are really gonna have to rely on playing creatively and setting up picks. But this is the thing for DFM, right? Like, we've seen them growing over the course of the tournaments, and I mean, Evie talks about how a oh. day, oh, we're going, uh. wait. Go wait, Cannonball, wait, go! Wait, the oh. curb on that, that was, that was impressive. Angelina Jolie. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh, hang on. They're gonna back away, but 
for Evi, they talked about how disappointed they were in game, like their games day one. They felt like they didn't have the best jobs. And then he also comes back and says, hey, look, we can beat anyone in this tournament. And right now they're proving it correctly. And for DFM, a team like for Udipon, who's been on this team since 2013, it feels like this has been such a long time coming for DFM for them to be able to step up and go with the best. Well, Evie's forced to slice through that maelstrom there as Breathe popped the World Ender, maybe threatening a dive, but Evie keeps himself alive now, critically saving the Flash as well. That Flash Cannon ulti, you talked about it in game one, my friends. It's so important on this cannon, kind of turns him into an entirely different champion in terms of how you have to approach the fight and what you got to be wary of. And he's got the teleport to be able to join in too. So even though he went back to the base, if they want to fight, they can still bring him in there. But RNG is going to get the Herald here for free. The response from DFM, they're willing to let these go. They've got a man in the sideline, and they're going to let him push. Yeah, they're just going to be able to get that wave in. does give them, you know, complete vision control over the bot side jungle. So no one from RNG could be able to rotate back and forth between mid and bot. But we kind of saw there how RNG needs to set up to take neutral objectives, right? Hard force in the 1v1s before they come out, get those health advantages, and then it's like, hey, DFM can't enter this five-man core and just out team by you. But the problem is you spend all that pressure on top side for RNG. DFM are like, cool, but well, we're just gonna move over towards the Dragon now that's in a couple of seconds. So now it's DFM that are set up. You don't have those health advantages. They don't have that positional advantage. And DFM are looking to see if they can pick off RNG as they start to move through. Wade charges in there looking for the Spectral Maw, but instead he's going to be found. Wade tries to get out. Yaharong burns away, and Wade ends up getting the kill credit. This is the kind of fight RNG is looking for. Breathe coming around from the side. Gets caught up here a little bit as Utapon does have some CC available with the Gravitum, but DFM went for the play there, and it's their mid laner who gets punished. Heavy TP'd in. He's in no man's land. Should be able to get out of here, but RNG are hunting, so the pick onto Yaharong should give the dragon. And this was just a little bit too hype out of DFM there. Evie doesn't even have an ulti ready to go with that TP. Utapon using the Gale Force there to reposition away from the Infernal Chains. Xiaohu coming in, gets exhausted. They're ready to fire back here a little bit, but oh. they cannot fire enough. It was close, but no cigar. And it's RNG smoking DFM. Gala's gonna knock Evie right back away, but he may still die here in the red buff pit. They get the kill, but now xiaohu has got to be careful. Yaharong staying on top of the distortion point as Evi gets another one, and DFM punch right back. RNG way over Chase, and Gala fails the jump back over the wall to safety, so Evi manages to pick him off. Yaharong will clean one up alongside him, and yes, you get the dragon for RNG, but a bunch of those picks are still going to DFM. I got to say, though, I still... Well, up until this turret, I thought that was pretty good for RNG because... With the way the early game went, in my mind with these drafts, I, like, I favor DFM going forward in this game. So they need moments like that where, honestly, I don't even know how Yaharong got bursted out so quickly. He well, was there, he was gone. It, there was so much damage that came in incredibly fast. We actually don't even get to see Yaharong because this is the after fight where Breed does a good job of putting pressure onto Yudapon to get the, uh, the Gale Force out. Xiaohu thinks, okay, I can now push first out Yudapon, but here, Yudapon goes down. Gala, this is where it gets a bit unfortunate. Gets the reset here, goes, okay, cool, I've got help from Xiao, who kills Harpoon. Watch, fails the oh. jump over the wall, and we're back in. We don't even have time to finish the replays. Steel's trying to get away. Ming's here on the front line. Buys time with a stopwatch. Nicely done. He will not be finished off. Stopwatch flash keeps the RNG support alive. They're trying to invest everything into the mid lane because look at the bot side. Yarong has this push. They know they don't really have anyone that can go against Yarong right now. So Yarong wants more. This side lane threat is becoming too big of a threat for RNG to handle. Yeah, and they're trying to make up for it in the top side with, with what Breathe is able to get done. I mean, has, has a bit of a CS lead for himself with those kills from Evie kind of equalizing it as well. Oh, Again, just the threat of the ultimate is so much to sway to anything from RG with that play forcing out Shahu's flash. Breathe is up here in the brushes, but DFM are lurking nearby. Breathe is going to go after Evie here. Slicing Maelstrom comes back out. Harp goes over the wall. Steel goes over the wall. Breathe's trying to run away, but that's a whole lot of ice. Breathe is stunned up. Evie's the only one who actually deals damage out of these three, though, and he is popped. He is dropped. 
and Breed is getting away clean and easy. And that's exactly what RNG needed. That play looked so good for DFM for me because we saw them, we saw RNG actually make the play up towards topside first, which allowed DFM to push in mid. Then when RNG went back to mid, it gave them a window, but who cares about windows because RNG want the Baron. RNG are gonna kick in the doors. They're on to the big purple worm as Unipon oh. goes after Xiaohu, but with Unipon down, this is tragedy for DFM. RNG are ready to rock and roll. Yaharong over the wall won't matter. They secure it with Wei's smite, and RNG are finally in control. And it's been a long time coming. RNG were struggling so hard to get any foothold in this game, but finally to get the pick on Evie, Xiaohu acquires his targeting Utapon, and they can get the Baron for themselves as well. This now gives them so big of an opportunity to get some of the standing going. It's so weird that RNG feel like the, the like scrappy underdog who are having to find these like weird oversteps from DFM to be able to win a game. It's where DFM have felt like the more controlled team, even in this game, even with them losing a Baron in the side of RNG. But still, at least now this Baron should be enough for them to start cementing themselves. We've seen Breathe has done a great job of just keeping pressure in that 1v1 in top side. So DFM constantly going to have to think of sending multiple members to go and answer up in that lane. And we're going to probably see them keep doing what they're doing, using this Xiaohu Ming squad to find picks elsewhere if Yudapon ever oversteps. Yeah, and that's why I think they'll just end up plunking Gal in the mid lane here. At this stage, like, Gala has good wave clear. He's getting good ranges. He hits the level 12 as well. He can start to chip away at these turrets and make it very difficult for Yudapon to solo hold on to these turrets, which then opens up the opportunity for, as you see, Xiaohu moving bot side, Breed to go into top lane. And you have to overcommit as DFM to one of these lanes to save it. And it looks like top side is going to be the one for they go for as Yarong was hovering, considering going for Breed there. DFM are on damage control for the next 90 seconds with the Baron in RNG's pocket, that bottom lane tier 2 turret, it's already down to 1 third HP. Xiaohu can take care of this one very easily. If Yaharong goes anywhere near him, Wei is just waiting in the shadows over the wall there, ready to follow that mid laner, ready to keep him protected and keep this momentum going. Tier 1 turret still standing after 22 minutes of gameplay. You know that RNG would like to be able to knock this one down, but DFM still holds the line for now. Drake spawning in about 10 seconds, and RNG have taken control of the bottom river. And this is why coming in, we thought RNG would be one of our better teams in the mid game because they don't over aggress too much for things. We see them just know, hey, we're gonna get this vision between mid and bot, play for the Drake and start to stack these up and have a bit of a win condition for themselves. You can see them constantly just keeping Yaharong locked in that lane. They know Breed doesn't need to be in top side right now. He can just be in Fog of War hovering back and forth and that's enough to dissuade DFM from from looking for any sort of play. Yeah, I like that DFM didn't even consider it though. They were just like, cool, this is yours. We're out We're gonna piece off top side. We're gonna get the, the tower for ourselves and commit members up there as well. Especially when you have a jungler like Viego with a Divine Sunder, Blade of the Ruin King build, you know that you don't need to commit more than one man to clear the dragon out in a decent speed. So everybody else on RNG is going to be looking for the plays and looking for the kills. Nice buffer through the Sejuani ulti there from Gala to not actually get caught oh. in any sort of a dangerous position. Wei looks for an opportunity to join up here on the flank, but the play is already over. Breathe tries to escape. Yaharong with the fate sealed over the wall, looking for the RNG top laner. He won't get him. Instead, it's Yaharong dead first, and Evi is going to make a nice side of fries. Double kill over to Xiaohu. And that's what RNG needed to do. They end up getting up to the top side, saving Breed just in the nick of time. And now they can start to take over in the jungle once more. Just making sure that Steel can't have any of his camps. I'd love to see them start to teeter now, get this wave to crash into the terror so they can get that tier two for themselves as well. And now right there, the team with this huge artillery piece that can so easily break down these turrets anytime a small pick comes through. That's one of the great things about Tristan is she feels like one of the champions that no matter what, how small of a kill or lead you Get, you can always translate it into something. And you can see how scared DFM are, right? We get this Yarong immediate TP into mid lane where they think, oh, maybe Wei's going for the dive, right? We need to save everyone, we need to stop this. Then he tries to play towards the top side. It's like, oh, maybe we can catch Breathe, but they're just not aware of how quickly RNGs, especially Xiaohu, can move through this jungle. So this is the quick uh, 1v1 with the C. Yarong ends up going for the TP to the top side to try and make this play happen. But look how quickly RNG are able to get across here, especially with the cloud uh, map as well. They get to the speed up through the jungle. They get here just in time. Ming may miss the, the bandage toss, but you've already got the follow-up there for Xiaohu. 
And Evie just, oh man, he's gone. That is the Yone Teleport. That is the Cannon Flash. These are massive tools for DFM that were committed to a play that resulted in nothing but two deaths and an Aatrox Flash. It feels really bad for them, and it feels like they've completely lost any sort of momentum they may have had in this game. RNG just has them choked out. Yeah, and you can see now, doing a great job of controlling this vision, DFM. Not going to have an easy time walking in. Uh, and I love it. RNG just keep going with this poke. LeBlanc, you're an assassin, a bit of an all-on champion, but you also function as a poke champion, not allowing for them to come through. Wave pushing in and bot as well, so DFM don't have the access through that side of the map either. I will just say, keep your eyes on this red ward that's on the bottom left corner of your screen there. That is the one that could actually be a good angle of attack for Evie if it stays up for the next minutes, because you are going to be looking at a big fight for the next Dragon, and I mean, RNG, if that actually doesn't get cleared out, that gives such a good opportunity for Evie to find his way into the back line. I just want to point out, though, that Gala does have Lord Dominic's build. Now, we were talking about earlier on how they really are going to struggle to kill the front line of DFM. Now, with Gala on three items, feels like they have the spike to do it. And I'm glad that he went to that choice, right? Normally we always talk about Infinity Edge third item. Yes. I love it when they divert over to the LDR instead when you're up against two of these Aegis champions, these big meatballs that you gotta shoot through. And now Yaharong, half HP again, having to back away. He had his fun in the early part of the game, playing the main character in the side lanes. Everybody else is working around him. I'm sorry, buddy, it is not your show anymore. Xiao Hu jumps in, immediately distorts back, gets caught by a Sejuani ulti that doesn't have anybody else within three miles of it. Now gets jumped on again. Holy hell, why'd you throw so much at him? He's LeBlanc. And I mean, at this stage, RNG, they still have to push him bot side. Bree should be able to move this in towards the inhibitor turret. You've got positioning here as well for RNG if they want to with resets coming in off a of Gala. Like there is a lot of space here for RNG. And that just felt like desperation out of DFM. They hit the Sejuani ulti, okay, but then a Braum ult and an exhaust and just all of these things the being thrown sink, at this guy. <laughs> He's already in the river, man. He's already gone. Dagda wears hysterics and threw his fridge at him as well, yeah. like everything. But RNG, incredibly mobile, right? I mean, even ignoring the LeBlanc, a lot of ways to escape from what DFM have. And heck, you guys hit on it great in, in Champ Selected. There's not a ton of like, easy and like quick CC to throw out. It really is just steal everything else. Needs a bit of time. There's a wind up. There's things like Braum where you, where you need to get that passive stacked up. So it's going to be quite the mission for DFM to focus one member of our And that's the biggest problem right now is that DFM just don't have control of the map. So it becomes very easy for Gala to go, cool, I just outrange this Aphelios so I can push faster. So yeah. I get to keep pushing in, we can push inside, and then we can use the fact that there is so little vision control on DFM's own side of the map that we just threaten it. That forces you back, then Gala gets the free hit on the turret, and they can rip through these structures. All right, it's time for Viego's medieval combat simulator again, where he goes and fights the dragon all by himself, while the rest of RNG doesn't have to worry about it. He should be able to secure this with no issue whatsoever. And you can see, Xiaohu and Breathe, they're just looking for anybody from DFM that might even be thinking about coming near this. A LeBlanc, an Aatrox, the power of an Amumu as well. They could look for whatever they wanted here. Wei actually not going after the dragon just yet, in Instead, they're looking for a scrap. Utapon, Harp, and Steel getting themselves away. That three-man squad staying together as RNG falls right back. The Drake's still live. Now we're getting some of those on my wave pings, but you can see them in red coming out from DFM onto the Baron pit. They're thinking about maybe trying something here. They have a control ward in the back part of the pit, but that control ward did not see the blue ward that just only now got removed by the sweep. No, and DFM, I think, realizing that they won't be able to go for any sort of play like this. RNG will be able to pick up Dragon, though. And I like the way that RNG are playing the map with this three-man core in the mid lane, breathe off on a side, but Xiaohu is the one going back and forth. A lot of times it could be your jungler because we see now Rabadon's death cap in pocket. Xiao is gonna yeah. be able to insta-give Utapon if he ever gets on top of him. You were talking about Xiao and Reef playing together in sides, Lethality, Aatrox, plus how massive this LeBlanc is. Anyone is just gone. Well, Gala gets away from Steel jumping over the wall, but then he gets caught afterwards. Yaharong looking for the RNG 80 carry, but won't be able to find him. Xiao Hu gets caught out by the slicing maelstrom. He gets a kill, and he gets away for now. Steel stays on him, and Steel cleans him up. But they've already killed two on the side of DFM. Utapon is gone, and Breathe will look for more. Gala is still ready to go, ready enough at least, as Breathe will keep the Yone away. It is a two for one, favoring RNG. DFM are forced back because Utapon lost his life in that initial fight in River, so RNG now it looks like they're trying to bait the Baron. 
see if they can draw DFM in, and Harp's gonna answer. Oh boy, there goes Harp. There goes Harp. Gala grabs that kill. Yaharong cannot snap back anywhere, and here comes Way to follow it up and take down Steel to complete the ace for RNG. RNG might have made, made a sweat in the early game, but able to come back with some beautiful picks and honestly just beautiful plays, baiting them into the Baron pit. DFM knowing, hey, we can't lose this one. We have about the same members have to go for it, but walking into the waiting arms of RNG. And now with a Baron in the cards, Dagda, everything's feeling uh, back to normal. Yeah, for now. yeah, yeah. For now. Can someone come up and collect these emotional support teddy bears? We're done, we're good now. They did their job, <laughs> man. Yeah. I'm saying well. that right now. They did their job and RNG are doing their job here in this one. Baron under their belts for the second time this game. Let's take another look at how it started off here. This is the biggest problem that DFM are having, right? Is that they never actually get to set themselves up properly. Evi is only just getting to this fight as everything in the kitchen sink has already been used, right? Yudapon has gone in. You've already got the Sejuani ult down. You've got the, the, uh, the Yone ult down as well. Everything has gone through before Evi really gets here. So we're not getting these front-to-back fights where DFM have a good chance. And instead you're getting, you know, Chow who would access the back line, Yudapon getting picked off immediately and then going in blind into this. It's easy as you like for RNG to clear this. And I just want to remind people that, like, this started the opposite way. That, sure, there weren't a ton of kills early on, but DFM were the team with map control yeah. for the first, like, 10, 15 minutes of this game. You know, Flowers talking earlier on, that was when he was the main character, but after those picks and mistakes came through for RNG, just hasn't been the same. Yeah, RNG had a sloppy early game. We saw the two different attempts from Ming to make a catch onto Harp, and it was just like, come on, man, what are you doing? We saw a two or 3,000 gold lead for DFM, but this is where we got to see more of the major versus minor region difference in the mid game, in the coordinated fight. And RNG has pulled ahead to the point where now DFM's gonna need a miracle to be able to survive. It's another hundred seconds of Baron they have to endure. And I mean, we, we've now gotten to the point where Gala does have the infinity edge. So pretty much being at full power for the Tristana. Dude, oh, oh, they're just gonna go boy, for the fight. There it is. Bandage toss, flash, ulti. Goodbye, Ophelios. Goodbye, Braum. Evia was cute, but that's about all you're gonna get. Steel tries to get away. Yaharong running out now as well. Gala may have died, but it cost the entire game to do it. DFM with only their mid laner left. Fall to RNG. It was a rocky early game, but RNG will bounce back in game number two. DFM tried to run the same comp twice, and RNG learned from mistakes. RNG got it figured out. Yaharong's gonna go in with a fate sealed, but I think the fate is his own. He goes back into the fountain. RNG has plenty of time. Xiao Hu drops the ignite, and he even gets the fadeaway kill. Series is tied up, and RNG gets the win. And a lot of the work in this game done by Xiao Hu. We were setting him up. Hey, he has to do a lot early. He has to do a lot in lane. He was trying. Trying was